Welcome to the fourth episode of the SIP Analysis Podcast. I'm your host, Igor Brent, and I'm joined with no one today. Um, Sadak Lancelot is not here. He is quite busy this week, so it's just me today. Link for the season playlist will appear in the top right and the description, so go check that out. Today, we'll be covering everything about Pantheon, so the good bad and the ugly. Hopefully we'll give you a revised outlook on pantheons and teach you or make you notice something new. This first season is a discussion on all mechanics and key decisions throughout the game, suitable for players on any difficulty slash skill. Episodes come out every Tuesday, so subscribe to be notified. Without further ado, let's get straight into the analysis. So first, how does one get a pantheon? Well, on standard speed, you need 27 faith to get it. And there are about three main ways to get it. You can run the God King card, which gives you a faith a turn. And you unlock that at Code of Laws, the first civic. You can actually not run God King if you spawn on the luxury resource or anything really, a wonder that gives you faith. For example, from dyes or from tobacco, that can give you faith per turn. And then you won't need to run the God King card because at turn 27, assuming you're working it from the off, you'll get your Pantheon. Third and last main way of getting faith is from tribal villages or goody huts, as we call them, and those give faith sometimes, though so, uh, they are quite rare. This is excluding um, faith reliant civs, of course. For some civs, you'll go for a holy site after going for the technology astrology, and then placing that will also give you faith. But normally, these ways are the fastest way uh, to get a pantheon, because pantheons can add quite nice bonuses for you if you get the right one. Now, on to the most common and best pantheons. There are kind of five main pantheons that you should go for. And the first is religious settlements. And that's near the bottom of the pantheon list. As you can see, it gives you a free settling capital and you get border expansion. Now, the 15% faster border expansion is kind of just an addition. But the main bit of this pantheon is getting a free settler. That is very big because you don't need to waste more turns building a settler you can get out that settler faster and then you can move it faster and settle faster then that city becomes useful for you a lot earlier essentially get more production and food in the game and getting that especially when you get the Panthers, probably your second or third city probably third that's really really important and can boost your game a lot but the problem and the downside is with this pantheon is that uh, the ai normally goes for it and normally generates faith a lot faster than you if you're playing on a higher difficulty level say if you're playing on deity and this pantheon is quite often not available but if you get a faith part or if you spawn on a luxury you can potentially a luxury that gives you faith you can potentially get religious settlements definitely or if you're a faith sieve and you've got a holy set nice and early but it also depends on other people in the game the second one is got a craftsman and that's about in the middle of the list about here and this gives one production and one faith from each improved strategic resource now this is very useful and quite good for your tempo tempo kind of like the speed and uh, the momentum of uh, your game because strategic resources come up all game so you'll have horses and iron first but later on in the game you'll also still benefit from this pantheon when you get nitre going coal and oil and whatever so on and really the pantheons that add production are the best ones because having more production allows you to do a lot of things and and that extra production especially early game is really really important and down the line this can really help you across the game but it isn't as good as religious settlements though but this one is a lot more common and a lot more easier to get because ai doesn't particularly rush it but the early tempo you get from getting horses and iron uh, is the most important bit getting that extra production really really helps god of the open sky is next um and that's plus one culture from pastures if you have a lot of pastures it is a good pantheon to go for that extra culture is important culture culture is probably more important than science um, unlocking policy cards so on are so so important getting governments faster culture is really nice so plus one plus one culture from pastures is really better than a lot of the other choices goddess of festivals is next and it's kind of similar to god of open sky up here and it's plus one culture from plantation so if you have a lot of plantations for example i don't know if you're my which you normally have quite a few plantations it's quite a nice pantheon to go for again for the same reasons as god of open sky they're slightly situational but these improvements are normally quite common so you do come across these quite often goddess of the hunt is the next one 
And Gods of the Hunt is similar to God of Craftsman in the way that you get the extra production. So again, it's a nice little wonder. And camps are quite a common improvement normally in the form of deer throughout your game. And the reason why this is so good is firstly, your early cities can benefit from that extra production. But the extra food is really nice as well for that just a bit extra growth because you're normally definitely going to be working camp tiles and they're normally really, really nice to work. Uh, for example, honey is a camp tile. Definitely benefits a lot from Goddess of the Hunt getting that extra production. These are kind of the main ones that aren't situational because they're such common improvements. But now we're going to look at situational uh, pantheons and there's definitely, definitely quite a few. So Dance of Aurora. When you're playing Tundra Sieves, it is really, really good. For example, when coupled up with um, Russia's Laverers, then Work Ethic, this is so, so nice because normally your Laverers, Holy Sites essentially, in, in the Tundra will be plus six if you place it next to six Tundra tiles. And that's really, really quite nice. The same applies to Desert Folklore. Normally you want to go that if you're playing Marley because that has a Desert Spawn Bias and everything about your game is very, very your bonuses are all related to desert and desert folklore basically does the same thing as Aurora. That you can get those very nice uh, holy sites on sieves like Mali as well using desert folklore. Next, we're going down all the way to the bottom, but these kind of like um, these are kind of faith related sieves. Earth Goddess is normally also quite quite good. Earth Goddess mainly because if you have a lot of woods and you have really no other better pantheon to go for is nice because you might have a lot of breathtaking appeal across your land and you get plus one faith on every single tile essentially it's not that strong but if done correctly you're playing an appeal game you want quite a bit of extra faith this can be quite a good pantheon especially if you're playing i don't know a preserves game where your appeal is going to be really good earth goes is a pretty decent one to go for fertility rights just the north um is normally for like a last resort it it's kind of similar with the religious settlements um have just beneath it but a settler and a builder is a massive difference settlers take a lot more time you're getting a lot more use out of a settler builder maybe they can improve three tiles at most uh, that's it they can chop or something uh, but really don't have the same impact as a settler and city growth for it 10% high is again a nice little bonus but isn't anything substantial so really it's kind of like a last resort if you don't really have any real choice of the pantheons before any real use of those pantheons uh, you would go fertility right because a builder really isn't that amazing just one builder god of the sea is a pretty decent situational pantheon Getting the plus one on all fishing boats is pretty decent. Uh, you get that across the all ocean resources, essentially, and it's quite nice. Lady of the Reeds and Martyrs is a pretty good pattern, but it's very, very situational. You're not really going to get marsh, oasis, and desert floodplains that often, but if you do and you have a spawn like that plus two production from every single one is really, really not bad. But the problem is you can only really improve these tiles with farms, so... Um, you're not really going to be getting much more production off it in the long run. Maybe from floods though or something. River Goddess is very good for specific sieves. For example, the Khmer getting that two amenities and plus two housing when they have holy sites adjacent to a river is really nice. It doesn't really give the holy site any particular adjacency bonuses like the three above. But the extra two amenities which can be really really nice and two housing can make your cities grow immensely and have much bigger yields and with stacked with commerce bonuses it can be pretty good sacred path is pretty decent and for example for sieves like brazil coupled with their abilities it can be literally doubling brazil's holy site agency but really if you spawn like a lot of rainforests and you're not you look at the land and you think that you don't have to chop these rainforests. Getting this and putting some nice holy sites between uh, rainforest tiles can really get, you know, still plus six um, holy sites, which are pretty good. But it's very spawn dependent. And rainforests you normally chop because sometimes they're on a hill, for example, this one to the right. And then you don't really want to go for sacred path because then you're not really going to have that many rainforest tiles if you want to chop. But if you didn't, 
it is pretty good because you can wait till i believe it's mercantilism where you are able to build lumber mills on rainforest tiles so lumber mills while not ideal mines are always always better and uh, i'm sure there'll be a video in the future on that they're better than nothing and if you have good holy site jc and get nice monumentalities it's definitely definitely a pattern you could go for monument for the gods lastly is is dependent on your strategy it could be good um towards your towards building wonders uh, but bear in mind it only applies to the ancient and classical era a lot of the ancient and classical era wonders are going to be taken by the ai on a higher difficulty uh, but if you play it right maybe your civs like china you can really get out wonders very very quickly but uh it is pretty strategy dependent and not normally a pantheon you'd go for now to the ones that we didn't mention divine spark is not really worth it against the ai especially in high difficulties plus one personal points really doesn't make a difference you mainly if you want to get a particular scientist for example i don't know um newton or einstein that is about it for this pantheon for divine spark because yes you get the plus one for holy sex which might increase you know your uh, faith output which is not too bad but that is a very minor bonus for amphitheaters writers against ai they're going to be generating uh, great people points a lot faster than you and uh having the plus one doesn't really help uh getting writers much uh, particularly much faster uh, so mainly is for the great scientists the problem is you normally would project for if you know what projecting is uh, once you have a district you can project for great people and uh, those give you a bunch of great person points of and yeah it really is kind of an underwhelming pamphlet it really doesn't give much against high difficulty ai because projecting for the main people is the way to go going down uh, the next one is stone circles. Now, sometimes you see a lot of quarries and you think, wow, this must be it. Uh, the problem with quarries is that you, you're only getting plus two faith from quarries. And normally you'd like to chop quarries uh, and make a mine instead because mines, again, are better than quarries and lumber mills. But we'll go into that in another video. But having plus two faith on quarries, say you're surrounded by quarries, you think, oh, wow, that must be a nice uh, one to go for. The majority of the time, as a religious sieve, you're going to want holy site adjacencies. And having the plus two faith from quarries, really, it doesn't really help. And they don't really scale particularly much. Whilst you might have a lot of quarries in one bit, you are unlikely to have it across your whole empire. You're unlikely to have lots of stone circles across your whole empire. And therefore, it doesn't really provide much. Say, for example, you had five stone. That only provides ten faith. That essentially stays stagnant for the rest of the game. Uh, religious idols is kind of the same but potentially worse because mines over luxury and bonus resources are, are pretty rare it depends on exactly what resources you have to name a few uh, luxuries that are improved up by mines are uh, for example silver salt mercury jade and you're not really gonna work that many tiles of those luxuries because they're not that common they're not all across the land so it's even rarer than quarries uh, definitely it doesn't really give you anything again apart from the plus two faith bonus resources are pretty irrelevant to that because the only way you can get uh, that bonus is from improving copper and again it is not that common but of course all the right spawn it probably isn't horrific, but it probably doesn't give much of a bonus as uh, for the same reasons as Stone Circle. God of the Forge is kind of an omission, I guess. It's definitely good for domination victories if you're going for an early, early push. A very early push. And it's seriously not that bad of a pantheon. The only problem is, especially on high difficulties, you're unlikely to want to invest that heavily into military, even on domination, because... The AI does kind of build walls quite quickly and has quite good units early and a lot of them. So warring with them at this stage isn't ideal, but it isn't a bad one to go for if you see the opportunity. Like getting out swordsmen quicker, archers, horsemen are all good, provided you get your strategy right. Initiation rights is really, really bad. I mean, you really don't gain anything. Plus 50 faith is literally useless most of the time and even for faces as we said there are a lot better panthers to go for so you wouldn't go for this one and the unit that cleared the barbarian host outpost heals 100 hp that's really irrelevant that's literally completely useless bonus 
in all honesty. God of Healing isn't that bad. But I, again, it doesn't really give you any bonuses. And it, when you're going to war, you heal anyway. And this is a very specific bonus. A very, 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 very situational. Maybe, I don't know, if you're dying and all you have is holy sites, maybe you want to go for this. So then you can have very, very strong troops around your holy site just healing very quickly. But apart from that, it's just... It's a very defensive Pantheon, firstly. Uh, you're very unlikely to use this offensively. It only affects your game at very certain points. You're not going to heal your troops on the holy site every turn, are you? Uh, let's be honest. Um, next, we have God of War, and it, not, it really isn't God of War. You get bonus faith to equal to 50% of the strength on each combat unit uh, within eight tiles of a holy site district. Now, this is a horrific. Uh, Pantheon, in my opinion. It's basically like the bonuses that you there are for quite a few sieves. I, I don't know if you know, for example, on Gorgo, you get a culture um, from each combat unit. Uh, but the fact that this one has to be eight tiles within Holy Site District makes it literally completely useless. There's not much else to say about that. City Patron Goddess, and uh, you know, it's not that bad. It's kind of like a God of the Forge. Well, 25% production isn't that much. You only get it for the first district in each city. Bear in mind, right? And 25% isn't really that big of a bonus. And with the other pantheons that are, are at play, you normally probably wouldn't go for City Patron Goddess. But say if you didn't spawn with any of those particular resources, for example, you didn't spawn next to camps, you didn't spawn next to horses, you didn't spawn next to plantations, City Patron Goddess could be one for go for because you could get down your campus quicker, you could get down your uh, holy sites quicker. And uh, I guess it's a bit of a bonus, but it's very difficult to see the impact of it. And normally getting it down that little bit earlier isn't really much um, of a bonus and the last one fire goddess plus two faith from geothermal fissures and volcanic soil again this is a very situational and normally as a faith reliant sieve you're not going to normally go for this if you have a crazy amount of volcanic soil and a crazy amount of geothermal fissures maybe but again it's the same pantheon as stone circles you have to have a very specific spawn to be able to use fire goddess otherwise it's again absolutely useless because it wouldn't generate that much faith and for example a volcano say if it had five tiles you only get 10 faith from it a turn assuming you're working with those tiles which you probably would do because it is volcanic soil but that plus 10 faith it gives you which probably takes a long time for you to get in the first place and get up and running is literally not useful at all so uh hope that was easy to digest but mainly the first five Panthers we're talking about and some of the situational ones are the most important by far. So thanks for watching. Uh, the next episode we will be recording. This time it'll probably definitely be with Ducks. We'll be covering governors and um, looking at how you should go about putting governors in your cities, where you should go for them and how to do so. So yeah, go remember to go check that out uh, next Tuesday. Subscribe, whatever, all that, you know, your jazz. Oh, yeah, thanks for 500 subscribers, by the way. Uh, much appreciated. Glad uh, you guys are enjoying the content.